Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 71. Day, day 3071, 3003 is to indicate that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 71, we are on page number 280, problem number 4 is what we are about to work on. And the problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. It says, what is the sum, what is the sum of the interior angles of a, what is known as a decagon, decagon, what the bloody hell is a decagon? What in the world is decagon? Well, decagon is exactly what it says. Deca meaning 10. Decagon means 10 sided picture. It's a 10 sided picture. 10 sided picture. Let's draw a 10 sided picture, shall we? So let's, let's, let's see what we can do. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. See? If, if you see here, 1, Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, this is only eight sided picture. Blast it. Blast it. Let's do it again. So let's do it freehand. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, watch what happens. If you were to connect them here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is nine, and this was ten. That is a decagon. That is a decagon. Pity. Hideous looking decagon, but decagon nonetheless. It's a very awful, ugly looking decagon, but decagon nonetheless. As you can see, all 10 sides, sides are not equal in this decagon. And neither are the 10 interior angles. Interior angles are these angles right here. Angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, they are not equal to each other. This decagon is not regular. If decagon, if, if I had drawn a decagon which were symmetric, which I didn't because I don't know how to, it will be too much to, to tie it. A symmetric decagon where all 10 sides are equal and therefore all the 10 interior angles are equal, such a decagon is called a regular decagon. This is an irregular decagon. Irregular decagon. Irregular decagon means it's not symmetric. It's not symmetric. All 10 sides are not equal to each other and neither are the 10 interior angles. We don't want, but we don't have to worry about any of that right now. We don't have to worry about any of that right now. We'll have to worry about those things when we get to the next problem, problem number five. Right now it's too early to worry about any of that. Right now all we need to understand is what is the decagon to which the answer is. is simply a ten-sided picture. Do you understand? It's simply a ten-sided picture. The question is, oh I shouldn't have raised it, why did I raise it? What's the sum of the interior angles of a decagon? Well before we worry about the sum of the interior angles of a decagon, Let's start with something that we know. So let's start with something that we understand and we know. What is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle? Well, that's a very silly question. Of course, the answer is 180. What about a picture that has four sides? What do we call a picture that has four sides? A four-sided picture, a four-sided picture, any picture with the four side is called a Quadrilateral. See, I, I did it. I knew I was going to misspell it. Quadrilateral. What is the sum of the interior angles? What is the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral? Qua any quadrilateral. One, two, three, and four. That's a quadrilateral. Again. It's not a symmetric quadrilateral, it's not a regular quadrilateral, it's not, it's not regular, it's not symmetric because as you can see those sides are not equal to each other, inside angles are not going to be equal to each other. 
this is an irregular quadrilateral because if it were regular it would be a rectangle obviously well not rectangle rather a square do you understand because in a rectangle only the opposites are equal it's a quadrilateral question is what's the sum of the angles in this side what is what is the sum of the interior angles here one two three and four what's the sum of these four four angles how do we figure them out how do we figure out their sum well the answer is very simple the answer is very simple what we need to understand what we need to understand is that any quadrilateral, any quadrilateral at all, regardless of what the shape may be, whether it's a square or a rectangle or something horrendous like this, if any quadrilateral is simply a union of two triangles. One more time, any quadrilateral is simply a union of two triangles. In other words, we can break it up into two triangles, two, two diagonal, either this way or we could have done the other way. It's two triangles, you can see. The sum of the angles in this triangle, of course, is 180. Sum of the angles in this triangle is 180. So, what's the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral? The answer is, it is simply 2 times 180. That's a four-sided picture. Let's move on to a five-sided picture. What do we call a five-sided picture? A five-sided picture is called a pentagon. What's the, what is the sum of the interior angles of a pentagon? Pentagon is a five-sided picture. Let's draw a five-sided picture. Let's draw a five-sided picture, shall we? One, two, three, four, and five. Again, it's clearly see, it's not a very nice looking pentagon, but pentagon nonetheless. It has five sides. One, two, three, four, and five. They're not equal to each other, as you can clearly see, and neither are the interior angles. This angle, this angle does not equal to that angle, and that angle does not equal to that angle, and so forth. You understand? But the question is, how do you figure out the sum of the interior angles of a pentagon. Well, it's very straightforward. What we need to understand one more time here is, is that any five-sided picture, any five-sided picture, and five-sided picture is what we call a pentagon. Any five-sided picture is nothing more than a union of three triangles. You can break it up any way you like. It doesn't matter. Break it up any way you like. It doesn't matter. Pick a point and start drawing. See, here's the first triangle right here. That's the first one. And again from here, if I go this way, there's another one. So here is one triangle, there's another triangle, and there's another triangle, as you can see. We could have picked, we, we could have picked any point and, and drawn three triangles. We could have picked any points. We could have picked any points and drawn three triangles. Just one more time with a different color. Any points, doesn't matter. We could have picked this point, for example. If you pick this point, there is the first triangle right here. Right here, one, two, A, B, C. Here's another one. A, B, C was the first one. A, C, D is going to be another triangle, and A, D, E is going to be third triangle. And we know that some of the angles in this triangle is 180. Some of the angles in this triangle is 180. Some of the angles in this triangle is 180. Therefore, the sum of the interior angles of a pentagon is simply three times 180. Let's move on. What about, what about a six-sided picture? What do we call a six-sided picture? Do we know? A six-sided picture is called a hexagon. What's the sum of the interior angle of a hexagon? Okay, by now, of course, we get the idea what, what's going to happen. Hexagon looks something like this. There is a six-sided picture. What's the, what's the sum of the interior angles in this, tri in this, this picture? Well, a hexagon is nothing more than a union of four triangles. It's nothing more than a union of four triangles. Okay, watch here. We can any point you like, doesn't matter. And start drawing triangles. There is one triangle right here. There is another triangle right here. There is one more triangle right here. And this first one. And of course, we know the sum of the angles in one triangle is 180. Therefore, the sum of the sum of the old four triangles here simply be 4 times 180. Do you understand? Let's summarize everything. Let's summarize what we have learned so far. Let's summarize here. So here's the summary. Here's the summary. When we, we found out that when we had a three-sided picture, and we had a three-sided picture. The sum 
of the interior angles. Let's put down interior and capital letter. Some of the interior angles. But how much was the sum of the interior angle in a three-sided picture? Well, three-sided picture is what we call a triangle. In triangle, the sum of the interior angle we know is 180. All the angles add up to 180 when we add them up. 180. It equals 180. Which can clearly be written as which can clearly be written as 3 minus 2 times 180. Because 3 minus 2 is 1 and 1 times 180 is 180. We found that a four-sided picture. Four-sided picture is called quadrilateral, and we found that in quadrilateral, the sum of the interior angle was two times 180. 2 two times 180. Well, 2 times 180. Can clearly be written as 4 minus 2 times 180. 4 minus 2 is 2 times 180. In a five-sided picture, we found out the sum of the angle was sum of the angle was 3 times 180. 180 times 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2 is 3, and 3 times 180. In hexagon, six-sided picture. In six-sided picture, we found that the sum of the interior angle was four times 180, which can be written as six minus two. Six minus two is four. Four times 180, and therefore, and therefore, this three dots means therefore, and therefore, and therefore, if we had a picture which had n side, n can may be any. Any number greater than or equal to three, because you have to have three sides at, at least to make a make make enclose it. Uh, if you had an n-sided picture, n-sided picture should have when it was three-sided picture, it was three minus two times one eighty. When it was four-sided picture, it was four minus two one eight times one eighty. When it was five times five-sided picture, it was five times two minus one eighty. If it's n-sided picture, it must be n minus two times one eighty. N n minus two times one eighty. We are interested in the sum of the interior angles of a decagon. Sum of the interior angles of decagon. Therefore, the ten-sided picture, ten-sided picture, which is what we are dealing with, decagon, would simply be ten minus two times one eighty. Very good. That's the sum of the interior angles. The sum of the interior angles of a decagon is right here. It's eight. Eight times one eighty. Eight times one eighty, whatever that happens to be. Eight times one eighty. Do you understand? We can do it out if you like here. Eighteen times eight. Eight eight is sixty-four. Carry six. Eight plus six is six plus six is twelve. So it's fourteen. One thousand four hundred and forty degrees. Some of the interior angles of a decagon happens to be one thousand. Four hundred and forty degrees. Let's answer question number five now. We are ready to answer question number five. That was the end of question number four. Question number five says, "What happens if we happen to have a decagon which is symmetric, which is regular, where all ten sides are equal to each other, and therefore all the ten interior angles are equal to each other? And such a decagon is called a regular decagon." So let's read the problem as it appears in the book. Let's read it verbatim. Number five. It says. If the polygon in exercise four, polygon simply means many-sided picture. Polygon, poly means poly prefix poly means many, which is where we do, where which is where we have word like polyglot. Polyglot is somebody who can speak many languages, multilingual. Poly polygon means many-sided. In a polygon, if if the polygon in exercise four is regular, in other words, if the decagon is regular, what is the measure of each interior angle? Let's find out, shall we? I have to raise all of this thing because we need the room. So that's the sum of the angles, sum of the interior angles of a decagon. What is the measure of 
each interior angle if the decagon is regular. A regular decagon is a symmetric decagon. All ten angles, symmetric decagon means a decagon where all ten sides and all ten interior angles are equal. So I shouldn't have written it like this. I shouldn't have written it like this because it sounds like there are two conditions that we have to meet. That is not what I meant here. That is not what I meant here. A symmetric decagon is where all ten sides are equal. All ten sides are equal. And if all ten sides are equal to each other, then automatically all the ten interior angles will also be equal to each other. Conversely, if, conversely, if, if, it should have been pronounced conversely, not conversely. Converse, as, as, we, don't, we won't go there. Converse means to talk. The pronunciation is converse. Converse means the opposite. Conversely, it's the same word, but pronunciation changes. Conversely, not conversely, conversely, if we are told that all the ten interior angles of a decagon are equal to each other, then that implies that all ten sides must also be equal to each other. So there are not two conditions there. It's just one and the same conditions. If one is true, then the other one is reflected. Do you understand? So a symmetric decagon is where all ten sides are equal to each other, and if all ten sides are equal to each other, that would imply that all all ten interior angles are equal. The question here is, what is the measure of each one of these interior angles? Well, that's difficult to figure out. Well, actually it's not, because we know what sum is. The sum of the 10 angle, we know, is 1440. Or, to put it a little bit more simpler term, 8 times 180. 8 times 180. And we want the measure of each one of them. And there are 10 of them. If there are 10 of them, and this is a, this is, this is a sum, then sum divided by 10 must give us the measure of each of these triangle. Divide that by 10. And it is simply, if you divide top and bottom by 0, it goes away. It is simply 8 times 18. 8 times 18, we just found out a little while ago that it was 144. Of course, it's 144 because if the sum of all 10 of them is 10 times that amount, 1440, then each one of them must be 144 degrees because they are all equal to each other. They are all equal to each other because all the sides are equal to each other. All the sides are equal to each other because we are told that it's a regular decagon. That was the end of question number five. Question number six deals with a different concept. It deals with the concept of an isosceles triangle. A very simple concept, but because it's a different concept, we won't go there. What we will do tomorrow, listen carefully, we'll do problem number six. We'll do problem number six and only problem number six and if you're wondering why in the world would you just spend the whole video just dealing with isosceles triangle, such a simple concept, the reason is, the reason is as follows. In the book, as the problem is given, it's a simple statement. What we're going to do tomorrow are three quantitative comparison questions. You know what quantitative comparison questions are? Where we are given two quantities in the two columns, column A and column B, and our job is to establish if one column is bigger than the other, or if the two columns are equal, or if we do not have enough information to establish either of those facts. Those are called quantitative comparison questions. We'll, we'll deal with three, not one, not two, but three quantitative comparison questions which will test our knowledge of an isosceles triangle in tomorrow's video. Okay? Bye now.